Hi, my name is Tim Prendergast, and I'm Chief Cloud Officer here at Palo Alto Networks. Prior to joining Palo Alto Networks, I was the founder and CEO of Evident IO, an organization that was created to solve a problem I saw in scaling out cloud infrastructures of Adobe systems. When you think about your cloud journey, you have a lot of choices today in public cloud. You have Amazon, Azure, and Google Cloud Platform, all of which provide you common capabilities and primitives to build out your infrastructure. When you think about these primitives, you have to think about the fact that compute, storage, network, and application control give you all the tools you need to build elastic, high-scale applications and services anywhere on the globe. When you think about what it takes to actually operate virtual infrastructure in this way, you have to remember the core security capabilities that you have to manage related to identity and access management, related to authorization, encryption, corporate policy, which is things like, am I allowed to use a size of server that costs three, four, five dollars an hour? Or should I really be using something that's more budget conscious? Should I be launching systems in regions and places that we don't operate? Many kinds of considerations that often people don't think about in the development life cycle, but are critical to managing business risk and compliance in the cloud. If you think about the challenges that you're going to face, most of these issues that are going to arise are going to be related to the way that you actually set up and operate your cloud environment over time. For an example, if your compute services are fully established, but you have your security settings allowing anyone in the world to access the administrative ports on your systems, you're opening the door to common attacks that exist and predate the cloud, but have never gone away in popularity. Similarly, we've seen a large number of storage attacks where public data has been exposed because organizations weren't prepared to manage the velocity and diversity of data they were putting up in the public cloud and then tracking it over all of time. What ends up happening in these environments is that you need to actually have some kind of continuous cycle to validate the thousands of potential settings that are occurring inside your cloud environment, not only once, not only quarterly, not only annually, but all year long, all day long, in near real time. This is because of the iterative nature of public cloud, creating continuous integration and deployment environments where infrastructure comes up and down and elastically scales to deal with workload, to deal with new deployments and application evolution, and to honestly deal with net new workloads that are being put in the cloud by your team. When you have your continuous monitoring strategy, you then have to think about when I'm monitoring my environments, what am I actually looking for and what's meaningful for my organization and what is really something that is you know, just kind of day-to-day -day acceptable business risk. That leads to an idea of continuous compliance where your organization has to have thoroughly established policies and, and capabilities that it understands and rationalizes as part of its day-to-day -day business, but hands down to the technical operations and security teams to actually enforce and carry on as a day-to-day -day good hygiene practice in the, in the process of ultimately getting to an acceptable audit uh, credential at the end of the year. As you start to scale up your workloads and environments, the complexity of these environments will continue to grow over time leading to dynamic changes and dynamic compliance evolutions, and ultimately lots of customer data and important uh, materials stored in the storage layer of your environment. You ultimately need to have a, st a secure storage capability that protects your cloud storage and all the data within and ensures that it meets the policies for your environment at all times. Imagine you were storing personal information inside your S3 buckets in Amazon, for example, you'd want to have that material always secure and always categorized correctly. In the absence of understanding what the actual content in those buckets are, you're at risk of potentially exposing a bucket that may be considered to only contain marketing data, but actually contains backups of your user and credentials databases. The interpretation and understanding of what you're storing in these environments is absolutely critical to the continued security and compliance of your environments over time. As you think about your journey to the cloud, remember, it may be fraught with a little bit of peril, but it's full and populated with tons of opportunity for you to be successful. Establishing a 
good continuous monitoring compliance and storage security routine for your organization will help you not only get the most out of the cloud environment, but also maximize your protection against emerging attacks in today's society. Thanks for joining us and stay tuned for additional content on public cloud security and please visit the evidence section of the Palo Alto Networks website to learn more.